For the following exercises, solve the equations below and express the answer using set notation. Okay. All right, this is the fun part. This is this is the math that I like. Just plain equations and solving them. So, all right, let's get down to business. <laughs> okay, so for the first one, we need to solve for the absolute value of x plus 3 and that equals 9. Okay, so new type of function here, the absolute value sign, but have no fear, we got this. The absolute value just represents that whatever number that is outputted or equal to, the answer is always going to be a positive. I don't know why I drew it like this. It equals G. <laughs> I'm kidding. It equals 9. Um, but just know that there could be a negative value as well. The absolute value is always going to say that your answer is always going to be the positive number. However, if it's a negative, right, let's just say that this was equal to a negative, the answer is going to still be positive. So whenever we think of absolute values, we always think of having two answers. One is always the positive, and that's the answer that's given. And the other one is the negative. Okay, so now I'm going to set this up using two different equations. We have to solve for the positive answer. So the absolute value of x plus 3 is 9. But then we also have to solve for the absolute value of x plus 3 equals negative 9. So let's start with the first one. Now, once you, once you basically break that off, you can get rid of the absolute value. If you have nothing else going on and you just have the absolute value and you have things trapped inside, you can break off your equation. And then you kind of strip away that absolute value sign. So instead, maybe I will do it like this to kind of show you guys a little better. So there's, there's really nothing that I can do on this side to get X by itself. Remember in algebra, um, you always want to get X by itself, but it's trapped in between these absolute values. So once you can't go any further, I can't say minus three because that's inside of these absolute values. Once you go, once you can't go any further, that's when you break down into the plus answer and the minus answer and you strip away the absolute value sign. So in this case, it would be just like we said, x plus three equals nine and then x plus three equals negative nine. And once you do that, you can strip away those absolute values and get down to an actual algebraic thing that we can solve. Now, all we got to do is solve. So let's work with the left one. All we got to do is minus 3, minus 3. In this case, x would be equal to 6. And if we work on this side, still minus 3, minus 3, but the answer now is negative 9, 10, 11, 12, negative 12. And those are your answers. Now, so maybe just box that off. Isn't this fun? I'm having fun. Um, but that's how easy it is. Now we just have to put it into a set notation. Set notation by default is these little bridges. You've seen these before, these like pretty little lines. And you always go from a, uh, we'll say least uh, positive to the most positive. So all of your low numbers are on this side and you go to the higher number. So you just have to analyze which number is lower here, the 6 or the negative 12. Negative 12 is obviously lower than a 6, right? The 12 is an actual negative value. So that number has to go first. And then when you want to just separate them, you use a comma. That's the set notation. And then you say your other answer. So it would be negative 12 comma 6 and put in these fancy little brackets and then that's the end. Pretty simple, right? But the key thing is, is that we're starting off with absolute values. So just know that if you can't go further, that's when you do your split. So let's look at this one. 
I have the absolute value of 6 minus x, and that equals 5. I want to get x by itself, but I, I can't do anything, right? There, there's nothing outside of the absolute value, like a plus 2 that I can do. It's trapped in between the absolute value with a 6. So I can't progress further. That's when I separate the equation into 2. There, it's equal to a 5, but it's secretly equal to a negative 5. <laughs> So let's break it down. Do your little arrows. We got 6 minus x equals 5. That's what's being shown. But secretly, there's another answer. 6 minus x equals a negative 5. And now let's solve. So maybe I will minus 6. I will minus 6. So we have negative x equals 5 minus 6 is a negative 1. But if you're looking for x and not negative, you just do the inverse. So a positive x would be not a negative 1, but the opposite. It would just be a 1. So there's one answer. Right, and this cancels out just to show you. And then if we do the next one, do the same thing. Minus 6, minus 6. Negative x equals negative 5 minus 6. So that would be negative 11. But we don't want a negative x, we want an x. So you just do the opposite. It won't be negative 11, it will just be 11. And there's your two answers. Look at that. Set notation, squigglies. Less number goes on the left, the more positive goes on the right. I analyze, I got a 1 and 11. Obviously now the 1 would be on this side, comma, 11. And that's it. Woohoo! Last one. You guys are getting it. I can feel you guys are getting it. Let's see. The absolute value of 5x minus 2 equals 11. Well, I, I can't do anything. This x is trapped in between here. There's nothing outside of the absolute value on the left-hand side of the equation. So I, in order to progress, I got to break it down. The absolute value is equal to 11, but there's a secret negative 11 in there. So 5x minus 2 equals 11. 5x minus 2 equals negative 11. Ooh. Okay. So now the algebra here is a little bit more tricky, but nothing that we can't handle. So we want to get x by itself. So I will plus 2 first, plus 2. We get 5x equals 13. And then I divide by 5, I divide by 5, so I have x equals 13 over 5 for this one. Cool beans. I can't simplify that, so we're cool on that side. And I'll just go like that, just to show you what cancels. And then if we do the same thing for the other one, plus 2, plus 2, this cancels. I have 5x equals... Negative 11 plus 2 is a negative 9. And then divide by 5, divide by 5. x equals negative 9 over 5. So I got my two answers. And I can't simplify that as well. Unless I want to turn it into a mixed fraction, but nobody likes those. Set notation. Which one is the more negative or, you know, the least positive, and which one is the higher number? Well, this one's a positive. There's no negative here. And this one is a negative. So this one is going to go on the left, and this one's going to go on the right. I'll just put that one up here. So squiggles. We got negative 9 over 5, comma, 13 over 5. And there is your set notation. Look at that, guys. Woo, we did it. What do you guys think? Absolute values aren't hard. These are fun. All right? So if this helped you at all, give it a, a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more math videos. Um, and I had fun today. Hopefully you guys did too. Have a great day. Happy studying. I will see you all in the next question. Bye-bye.